Hello friends, welcome to another video from Silicon Craftsman, the product and user experience guild at Neo. I am extremely excited to be diving deep into Rose Finance today. If you're new to the channel, this is a place where we do product deep dives into all the products launching on the Neo, Aurora and Octopus ecosystem. Why do these products exist? How can we use them? And how do they get us closer to mass adoption? Remember that there are a lot of blockchains out there, but Near stands out as the only and best blockchain enabled builders to create unique and excellent user experiences. So without further ado, let's jump into Rose Finance. I actually think this video is going to be extremely useful. And if you like it, please share with all your friends, like, subscribe, comment, and all the rest for several reasons. The first reason is that Rose Finance as it is right now presents an excellent strategy for these kind of markets. I'm talking potentially bearish markets, sideways markets, on certain markets. There are some good entry level things that we can start doing with stable coins and earn good yield. Second reason is that I think there's actually a bit of an information arbitrage. This video would potentially be considered an alpha leak because even though all the information is publicly available, the information was published in last October. And let's be honest, that's like several decades in the crypto world. So the team has been heads down building the amazing product I'm about to talk about. And I think that most people have missed what the full spectrum product and the full potential is. So I'm really excited to bring it all together now, especially because I've been in contact with the team and they will be launching the new features very soon. So this could be an excellent time to get involved. Third, I love Rose Finance because it is yet another player, another key competitor in what I've called in previous videos, the trifecta. I think Rose Finance is going to unleash an astronomical amount of value for the ecosystem, for you, for everyone. What do I mean by the trifecta? As DeFi is fundamental for every blockchain ecosystem to take off. We covered this one in more detail in my last video about borrow cash. So if you're interested, go check that one out. But in a nutshell, DeFi enables two fundamental things. The first one is it gives whales an ability to take out loans against their assets. So it removes the need for them to sell coins to cover their expenses. And most importantly, it also enables people to take loans against the assets to buy more of the asset. This puts us in a prime position for a giga pump. And when you look at the history of Nier, it is one of the few L1 blockchains that haven't really pumped yet because we haven't had this DeFi yet. And there's an extra reason why I really rose. And that is that when we look at Rose Finance through the levels of this trifecta, is when you really start to appreciate how incredibly savage the team is. This is an absolute masterclass in product design and go-to-market strategy. The way that I'm looking at it, they sat down months ago and then identified all these components that we're talking about, what is necessary for this to be successful, and they basically set out to build all of them. So let's jump right in. Rose is a liquidity protocol on Aurora composed of a stablecoin and wrapped assets exchange and a collateralized debt position, CDP, based stablecoin utilizing interest bearing tokens as collateral. This is where, if you go back and read the blog post from October 2021, it's all pretty clear. However, this is where I'm talking about the information arbitrage. When we go to the Rose exchange, it is very similar to the interfaces from other exchanges, but we only have a handful of tokens, all stable coins. You can farm, you can do some staking. It's pretty basic. See, there is nothing in this current UI UX that would tell you the true plans and scope of Rose. And while there is a borrow tab that says under construction, you'd have to go back to the blog post. There is nothing here that tells you that they will be issuing their own stablecoin, and that's where it really things come together. Usually the way things work is people look, people discover the token through farming. They come, they check out the product, and they get a bit of a sense for what the token potential can be. The tokenomics for this kind of exchanges, it's very much the same. The exchange earns a fee from all the swaps, and the fee gets distributed across token holders. 
If we go to the staking section of Rose, we can see that it is barely generating 1.6% and that would serve to validate my initial concerns of realistically, how much volume can there be just among stable swaps? It's a couple of things here. The first one is Rose is a first incubated project from Nearpad. It is actually the same Nearpad team. So what I started wondering was, given that Nearpad has their own decentralized exchange, why not just combine the stable swap feature within the normal exchange? So that way you have one token capturing all the volume from both traditional swaps and stable swaps. Especially this would have made sense given that Ref Finance recently introduced their stable swaps uh, feature and naturally it is embedded within the main product so that now all swaps accumulate value to the Ref token. And don't get me wrong, like Rose Acid is an excellent product. Just within the stables, they've been able to accumulate millions of dollars. They've done some remarkable work in bringing UST from Terra over to Nier. They've done some great work bringing Frax over into Aurora. And they've also recently added BUSD from the Binance ecosystems. However, it has to be said that at first glance, it was a little bit unsexy. But... Let us not be misled by the simplicity of the current offering because the true spicy bit is in the second product feature and that involves RUSD or the Rose Dollar, which is going to be a yield bearing asset stablecoin issued by Rose. It is inspired by Aracadabra and it would actually be quite similar as well to NUSDO from Oin Finance. So at this point, you're probably thinking there's nothing new to a synthetic dollar issued with yield bearing assets. And that may be true. However, we have to understand is that issuing a synthetic US dollar has two main challenges at a product level. The first one is maintaining the peg or maintaining the value. That one is relatively easy because you can solve that within your own platform. You're just going to make sure that the value of the collateral is always higher than the value of the dollar. The real challenge comes with adoption and convertibility. You need to make sure that the new synthetic dollar has very easy convertibility with other stable coins and with other coins because naturally there's not much point in issuing a dollar if you can't do anything with it. And this is where I think that the team has been extremely smart and very strategic. The synergy starts to become pretty obvious. So basically what the team has done, which I think is brilliant, is they first issued a very simple, unsexy stable swap, and they ensured that the first product within its simplicity and its unsexiness was successful. And now they have millions of dollars worth of diverse range of stable coins. And now they're placing themselves for the kill. Now they're going to issue their own US dollar that will naturally have immediate convertibility with these tens of millions of stable coins. So if we put ourselves in the shoes of the average user holding ST near or stake near as a premium yield bearing asset, we could really go to Oin Finance or Rose. There's not much of a difference at the original product stage. RUSD and USDO are technically going to be the same offering. They're both going to be worth $1. They're both going to allow you to borrow against your collateral. However, you can immediately see where things get very different because in USDO, it's extremely limited. They only have one pool on Rev Finance, which has less than $1 million in liquidity, and it is a pool with NEAR. As you can imagine, it is not possible to maximize the $30 million NUSDO debt ceiling because it's just not possible to, to funnel $30 million through an $800,000 pool against NEAR. There's been very heavy price swings, and it's just not viable. Compare that to the new RUSD. As it stands, the question mark is, what is going to be the RUSD debt ceiling? Because the way that I see it, if you have the ability to issue a dollar, which is very easily convertible with other stable coins, and the Rose team is in partnership with Nearpad, that they own their own decentralized exchange, let's bring it all back together. What problem is Rose Finance trying to solve? Rose Finance is coming in as a key player to help us unlock the billions of dollars currently locked in staking. 
They do this by enabling yield-bearing assets such as ST Near from Metapool to be used as collateral to issue their own US dollar, which can then be very easily exchanged on their own stable swap platform and their own decentralized exchange. Just to get an idea of the total addressable market, there are currently 381 million NEARs delegated to secure the network at the current price of $10. That's over three, that's almost four billion dollars waiting to be unlocked. When we look at Metapool, we can see that there is a massive gap in this market because up until now, there are only there are barely 2.5 million near out of those 380 used for liquid staking. And as I've mentioned in my previous video, the core reason why I believe that Metapool has not had a bigger uptake is because there hasn't really been any avenues yet for accessing liquidity. The only one available right now is OIN Finance. And as we keep mentioning, they have major challenges with convertibility. And while this may get solved with Ref Finance soon, they are working on implementing NUSCO to the stable swap. The question is, who's going to achieve this first? Now, at the beginning, we also mentioned that all these exchanges have a pretty simple model. They earn fees and the fees are used to purchase the coin on the free market and give it to stakers of the coin. So now that we know that Rose Finance is a lot more than just a basic stable swap, let's actually dive into the tokenomics to get a better understanding on just how big Rose could get. So Rose has three main tokens. There is a Rose token, there is ST Rose, that is the token that you receive when you stake your Rose token, and there is the RUSD, which can be issued using ST Near or ST Rose. I'll link the blog post in the comments if you want to go into a little bit more detail on the distribution. The key bit that I'm interested in is ST Rose will earn 63% of the fee generated by the protocol. And Rose earns protocol fees in two ways. The first one is stable swap fees, and the second one is interest from borrowed RUSD. So this, as always, this is not a financial advice channel. We do not like to speculate, but I would invite you to entertain how much RUSD do you think could be issued? At the moment, the ceiling for OIN Finance and NUSDO is 30 million. And usually the way it works is there are debt ceilings just to ensure the stability of the system. You don't want to flood the market with too much of the coin. You want to allow all the new issuance to get absorbed slowly in a natural way. However, the debt ceiling naturally increases over time. And if we look at other protocols like MIME, they're literally in the billions of dollars now. So look at the amount of near being staked, the value of the near, ask yourself how much RUSD could be issued, take into account that the challenges that other stable coins have faced towards reaching their maximum issuance are being removed. And if you think about it, it is actually a phenomenal business model because not only are people going to pay interest on the, on the potentially astronomic amounts of RUSD being issued, but also, they're going to pay the fee of swapping the RUSD for another stablecoin on their own exchange. So you have two really good revenue streams. Now, as much as I try to contain my excitement and not lead you down the way of a savage speculator, I cannot close the video without looking at the current valuation of Rose. So... As with most of the market going through a little bit of a downturn at the moment, you can see that the price has had a patchy ride similar to the rest of the crypto market. Don't be confused by the fully diluted valuation. This includes all the coins, even the ones that have not been issued yet or are in circulation. And while we don't have the latest information on the current circulating supply to give us the actual market cap of the actual circulation, Looking at these numbers, I can tell you it is dramatically low and I am inclined to think that the market is not taking into account the super strong stack that Rose Finance is building and the potential of RUSD.
If you wanted to buy some rose, you can purchase it on Nearpad. Alternatively, as we mentioned at the very beginning, there are some really good ways to farm stable coins and earn pretty healthy returns on rose token. This could be a fantastic way to accumulate the token while minimizing financial risk. Thanks so much for watching. As always, let me know in the comment section below if you have any questions, if you have any thoughts, any theories, any comments on the world of DeFi on Rose, anything that I got wrong, please let me know. I do try to read all the comments and reply. So let's keep in touch. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure that you hit that subscribe button really hard. We are pivoting towards creating a lot more content and we have a lot of alpha on the pipeline. See you soon.